Okay, so in this problem, we're told a child slides down a slide with a 34 degree incline and at the bottom, her speed is precisely half what it would have been if the slide was frictionless. Calculate the coefficient of kinetic friction between the slide and the child. So I went ahead and drew what we have going on here. So we have this child. It's going to be going down a slide like this. We know the incline is going to be 34 uh, degrees and we know that the speed here Right, so they tell us her speed is precisely half what it would have been if the slide was frictionless. So at the bottom, her speed at this point is exactly half what it would be if the slide, or if the slide was frictionless. Okay, so how are we going to solve for this? So the first thing we're going to want to do is draw the free body diagram of what's going on here. So I'm going to draw it right here. So uh, we know there's going to be the force due to gravity acting straight down which is equal to mg, right? That's the force due to gravity. We know there's going to be a normal force acting upwards like this. We know that there's going to be a force of friction acting this way, right? Opposite the way of motion. And then uh, notice, or another thing I need to explain is that when you do problems like this, you want to treat everything along this line as the x-axis, right? So parallel to the incline. And then perpendicular to the incline, you treat as the y-axis. And so notice that the force of friction and the normal force are along these uh, the x and y axis, but mg's on neither. So we have to find the components of it. So we want to find the x and y components of this mg. To do that, uh, we can imagine that this would be your y component, this would be your x. So uh, this would be your f of g of x, and this would be your fg of y, right? Because this is along the y axis, this is along the x axis, right? Parallel to them. And so uh, now that we have all our forces labeled with respect to an axis, uh, what we're going to do is basically sum the forces, um, sum the forces here, right, in the x direction for two different scenarios, one where there's friction and one without friction. And you'll see why we're doing that in a second. Uh, but I think it's easier just to do it, and then I'll explain it. So what we want to do is sum the forces along the x. And so we know the sum of the forces equal ma along the x, right? So max. Um, and so uh, we say max equals, and then what we want to do is just sum the forces along the x direction. So notice there's only two forces in the x, the force of friction, right, along the x. And then in this case, uh, mg has an x component, right? And then f of n and fg of y are in the y, so we can just exclude it. So I'm going to choose to the right to be positive, to the left to be negative. So positive, negative. Also, upwards is positive, downwards is negative when I sum these forces. So the force of friction is the opposite way. And then we're going to add Fg of x. So notice we have Ma x equals uh, minus the force of friction. So the force of friction is equal to mu sub k times F sub n. That's the formula for it. And then what I'm going to show you now is how to find fg of y and fg of x. So if you imagine this like a triangle here with this angle theta, where theta is the same as uh, this incline, right? So this angle here is the same as this, or whatever the incline is. Um, the x component of this, you would just use trig. So you should know the sine of an angle, in this case theta, or theta, which is 34. Sine is opposite, which in this case is fg of x, over the hypotenuse, which is mg. So fg of x over mg. Uh, and then you would just multiply both sides. So mg sine of theta is your fg of x. Uh, and then for fg of y, it's the same thing, but you just use cos. So fg of y. Uh, notice, right, because cosine is the adjacent side over the hypotenuse, while the other one was the opposite over the hypotenuse. So uh, yeah, so now we know fg of x is mg sine of theta. And cool. So what we want to do now is basically get it in terms of, or we actually have to solve for one more thing. We have to solve for the normal force. So let's go ahead and do that. So uh, to find the normal force, we have to sum the forces in the y. Uh, we know they're going to be equal to zero because it's not accelerating and they're moving in the y direction. If you're not moving in it, the acceleration would be zero. So zero equals 
And then looking at the forces in the Y, you have uh, the normal force and the Y component of gravity. Upwards is positive, so we have F sub N minus uh, FG of Y. So F sub N equals FG of Y. Moving this to the other side, you'll see that. So FG of Y is just MG cos of theta. And now we um, have F sub N. So MAX equals minus mu sub K times MG cos of theta plus mg sine of theta. And so what we're trying to do is solve for the acceleration here. So uh, to do that, we notice we have an m in each term, so those will cancel. So you have ax equals, and I'm going to move this out front, so g sine of theta minus mu sub k g cosine of theta. And so this will be the formula for the acceleration, assuming that we have friction here. And so... Uh, as I said before, we want to do it both ways. One way where there is friction, and one where there isn't friction. So keep in mind that this is the friction one. So friction one. And now we're going to do the frictionless one. So all we're basically imagining is that this force, uh, this force of friction isn't there. So uh, we'll sum the forces in the x again, where it equals mAx. Uh, and then mAx equals... Uh, notice in this case, there is no force of friction. The only x component is your fg of x. So uh, ma of x equals mg sine of theta, right? Because the only force in the x is our fg of x, which is that value. Um, and then now to solve for a of x, you would just cancel the mass on both sides. And uh, yeah, so now notice you have two formulas. One where there's friction, and then one where there's or it's frictionless. And so now what we're going to do is solve for the child's velocity uh, using a kinematic formula. So the kinematic formula we're going to use in this case is v squared equals v sub zero squared plus 2a times delta x. So this is one of your main kinematic equations. Uh, you should have it memorized based on the previous units. Um, but this formula basically represents their velocity in terms of acceleration. Uh, and so if we look at this formula, notice for this child, their velocity or their initial velocity, uh, which is V sub zero is zero. So their final velocity or V squared is equal to two A times the change in their X. And so basically what we're going to do is plug in our acceleration into this formula. And you'll see it's going to cancel out in a, such a way that we can actually solve for, um, what they want us to find, right? Which is mu sub k. So you'll see how it works in a second, uh, but plugging it in. So I'm gonna pick up two scenarios. One, scenario one, we're gonna call where there is friction. So I'm gonna call this V1. So V1 squared equals two, right? Where V1 is the final velocity of our child here, right? Because notice in this formula, you have initial velocity and then final. So we're basically solving for the final velocity um, using this formula, right? And for both of them, the, ex the initial velocity is zero, so that's why we can cancel it out. So if we plug it in, right, I'm just plugging in A of X for the friction one. So G sine of theta minus mu sub K G cosine of theta times uh, delta X, right? Where delta X is your change in position or how far we travel. Um, and now what we want to do is plug it in for the non- friction one or the frictionless sorry about my handwriting I'm just trying to go through this quicker um, but yeah so in this case we're gonna use v2 for the second one so v2 is equal to 2 times a which in the frictionless case is g sine of theta multiplied by delta x and so the way this is gonna work is we're gonna substitute so keep in mind this is the velocity of our child at the end of the slide. And so we know that, so basically, let's read what they tell us again. So they tell us that at the bottom, her speed is precisely half what it would have been if the slide had been frictionless. So what this should tell you is that the one with friction is twice or half what it is in the frictionless one, right? So that's basically what they're telling us there. And so, this value, V1, is essentially half the value of V2. So this basically tells us 
two V one equals V two. Since the velocity, right? If you just divided this by two, half of V two, right? Where it's frictionless is equal to the velocity at one. They tell us that information. So we know two V one equals V two. And what we can do with that information is plug it into this formula, right? So we know V two is two V one. So this would be two V one squared equals two G sine of theta delta x. Now, if we just expand this a bit, it would just be right multiply or square the two and then square the V one. You would get two G sine of theta delta x. And so essentially we have here two formulas with our V one. And so what we can do now is basically just solve for our uh, mu sub k by manipulating these formulas. And so how can we get rid of the v1, right? Because obviously we don't know that value, uh, but we want to solve for the mu sub k. And the way we can do that is by basically dividing one formula by the other. So we have v1 squared equals 2g, or sorry, 2g sine of theta minus mu sub k g cosine of theta delta x. And then we're going to divide this whole thing by this one. So 4v1 squared equals 2g sine of theta delta x. And so what you'll notice here is your v's are actually going to cancel. So this value is going to cancel. And then all we have left is our mu sub k. And we'll just be able to solve for it. So it's the only term left. So uh, notice here the delta x's will cancel since this is one whole term. And so you'll be left with Oh, and your twos will cancel. Sorry about that. So you'll be left with sine of theta. Oh, sorry. And your g's will cancel. So a bunch of things actually cancel here, right? Because notice there's a g on each term. So you'll basically be left with sine of theta minus mu sub k cosine of theta divided by the sine of theta, right? And so uh, basically simplifying this some more, sine of theta over so sine of theta is just 1. And then this cosine of theta over sine of theta is, well, we know sine of theta over cosine of theta is tangent. Therefore, uh, this would just be 1 over the tangent, right? Because all we did was basically flip it. Because 1, 1 over tangent is arctangent, which is cosine over sine. So hopefully you remember that from calc. Uh, but yeah, so if we want to solve for this, uh, we can just minus 1 from both sides. So you'll have, uh, let me do this, mu sub k, zoom out a bit, over the tangent of theta is equal to uh, 1 over 4, 1 over 4 minus 1. Uh, but keep in mind there's a minus sign here too. So if you swap this, it would be 1 minus 1 over 4. Right, because I just moved the 1 to the other side, but then the minus sign will flip these signs. Uh, and then you would just multiply both sides by the tangent of theta. So 1 minus 1 over 4 is obviously 3 over 4. Keep in mind what theta is. Theta was the incline angle, um, which over here is the value of 34 degrees. So plugging that in now, uh, basically your mu sub k is the tangent of 34 degrees multiplied by 34 or 3 over 4. Sorry about that. So you have the tangent of 34 multiplied by 0.75. And when you do that, you'll get mu sub k equals 0 0.505, which is about 0 0.51. Let me zoom in a bit here. So your mu sub k is going to be equal to 0 0.51. Uh, notice that there's no units on it, um, right? Because it's just the coefficient of friction. Uh, but yeah, so 0 0.51, that's your answer to this problem. Uh, just a quick rundown of what we did. So uh, I knew, right, if we start from the back, we knew we had to get uh, the velocity, right, both of them in terms of their velocity, right, because we had to cancel them out. And that's how we related it. So they related it based on velocity. So I knew we needed the velocity uh, for both of these formulas to cancel. So uh, in order to do that, I had to solve for both of these formulas by summing the forces and then use kinematics to get it in terms of velocity, right? Because I can get it in terms of acceleration by summing the forces, but we need it in terms of velocity. 
And then we just did the relation that uh, we knew the friction one, right? The velocity at the bottom of the friction one, right? The final velocity was equal to uh, one half of the frictionless one, right? So two V one uh, is equal to V two. So V two is basically twice what the friction one was. And then, yeah, it was just a matter of plugging it in uh, and then simplifying to get your answer. Uh, but yeah, so this is going to be your answer, 0.51. And hopefully you found this video useful.